Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. We are tackling episodes 11 and 12 of Love Next Door today and let me tell you this K-drama recap blog post did not disappoint. Some seriously juicy opinions in here folks. Yeah these episodes were a wild ride mm. especially considering we only have two weeks left of the entire series. It's like the writers suddenly decided to crank up the drama to like a thousand. I mean, just think about it for a second. We would fall in these childhood friends turned adults. Will they, won't they, with the romance, right? Yeah. And suddenly, bam, family secrets, career dramas, angst. Enough angst to fuel like three more seasons. Seriously, it's like someone hit the fast forward button on the storyline. Which, okay, sometimes I'm here for it, but other times. Like with Siokri's whole chef dream, remember how her family was basically like, no way, not happening. And now, like a switch, everything's hunky-dory. It's resolved so quickly, it's like, did we miss something? And that's what the blogger points out, right? It's one thing to give a character a win. But when it undermines, like, episodes of emotional buildup, it makes you question if those struggles were ever really that deep to begin with. Oh, 100%. Especially when you compare it to what Sung Hai is going through with his family. Talk about a roller coaster. Divorce out of nowhere. Rumors of an affair. His mom disappears. It's giving very much classic K-drama chaos. Total mockjang, but, like, in a good way. Right. Though we gotta hand it to the blogger. They made a really interesting observation. Remember those classic K-drama tropes? The red herrings, the misdirection. They are out in full force in these episodes. For real. Like, that whole thing with Sung Hyo's mom potentially having Alzheimer's had us all going down a rabbit hole of theories only to be like, wait, what? Exactly. The writers definitely know how to keep us on our toes, but it does make you wonder if all those twists and turns were actually effective, or if they just ended up being a bit too much. That's the million dollar question, right? Because on the one hand, we got that incredibly raw and emotional scene with Song Hyo finally confronting his parents. Like you could feel the weight of all his unspoken feelings just pouring out of him. The blogger even drew a parallel between that and Sakuri's breakdown a few episodes back, suggesting that both characters are kind of going through similar journeys of self-discovery. Which thematically totally tracks. But on the other hand, it did feel very much like, go, 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 drama, 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 like, take a breath, writers, give us a minute to process. And that's where the pacing issue comes in, isn't it? Because while all this drama is definitely engaging, it does come at a cost. And that cost, as the blogger so eloquently put it, is the emotional payoff. They even said something like, it's like the show is so busy checking off plot points that it forgets to actually make us feel those moments. Okay, yes, 100%. Because when I think about that scene, you know the one, right? Sunflowers, hidden message in the recording. Sang Hyo basically pulling out all the romantic stops leading up to the big kiss. Oh yeah, that scene. On paper, it's everything you could want in a K-drama romantic climax. But did it actually deliver? Well, the blogger described it as visually stunning. I mean, who doesn't love a, a good sunflower field, right? Right, like peak romance vibes. Exactly. But they said it felt kind of hollow. Like eating a whole bag of cotton candy. Sugar rush, sure, but no real substance. It's like they skipped a whole chapter in the story. You know what? You're totally right. I didn't even register it at first, but there's a glaring omission in this recap. And it's a big one. Wait, are you talking about Sakri's cancer scare? Because, yeah. yeah, that just disappeared. Vanished. Like it never even happened. One minute, it was this huge emotional weight hanging over everything. The next, poof, gone. Like, it was nothing. It's like the writers got scared of their own shadows. Decided yeah. to backpedal and pretend they never went there. And it's frustrating because as a viewer, you're invested, right? You connect with these characters, you feel their pain, their fear. And then to have it just brushed aside like it was nothing, it's almost like saying those feelings don't matter. And it robs the story of so much potential depth. I mean, imagine if they had actually explored the emotional fallout of Siakru's cancer scare, how it impacted her relationship with Sung Hyo, her dreams, everything. Right. Talk about a missed opportunity for some seriously powerful storytelling. Instead, it's just, oh, everything's fine now. Back to the romance. Which, speaking of the romance, are we buying it? I don't know. On the one hand, I'm always here for a good friends-to-lovers storyline. The slow burn, the anticipation. It's a classic for a reason. But the blogger made a good point. It all feels a bit rushed, doesn't it? Like they skipped over those delicious moments of tension and awkwardness that make the payoff so much sweeter. They mentioned another K-drama, bottom of the ninth with two outs, Apparently, it nailed that whole friends-to-lovers transition. Oh, I've heard good things about that one. And now I'm wondering if Love Next Door tried to cram too much into one season, sacrificing those nuanced moments of romantic development in the process. It's a delicate balance to strike. You want to keep the momentum going. 
but not at the expense of the emotional core of the story. Exactly. And it feels like Love Next Door might be struggling to find that balance, especially as we head into these final two weeks. The stakes are higher than ever. Because even though we've got these seemingly happy couples now, the blogger ends the recap on a note of uncertainty. Like, they're not sure if they can trust the show to stick the landing. Which, honestly, is a testament to the power of good writing. Even when it's flawed, even when it makes questionable choices. A compelling story will keep you hooked. Leave you wanting more, even if you're not sure you like where it's going. And that's what we're left with here, isn't it? A whole lot of questions and only two episodes to get some answers. And you know, speaking of questions, can we talk about Moliam's confession for a second? Oh yeah, that threw me for a loop. Because the blogger mentioned it. But I feel like it deserves a deeper dive of its own. Totally agree. I mean, talk about a bold move, mm -hmm. declaring you want to be a mother figure to someone you've just started dating. Right. Like, I get it. Moeam's always been the super enthusiastic type. But that feels like a whole other level of intensity. And it's interesting because, on the one hand, it shows how much she cares. She sees Danho and his daughter as a package deal. And she's all in. Which is sweet, in theory. Yeah, in theory. But on the other hand, talk about putting a ton of pressure on a budding relationship. Seriously. Imagine you're Danho. You're still dealing with the emotional baggage of a divorce. And suddenly you've got this woman who barely knows you, talking about stepping into a parental role. It's a lot, and it makes me wonder if the writers are trying to make a point here about the dangers of moving too fast in our relationship. Ooh, I like that. Because we see it all the time in K-dramas, right? Yeah. Couples rushing into things without really thinking about the long-term consequences. Yeah, exactly. And then things blow up in their faces. <laughs> Which, let's be real, is always entertaining to watch. Oh, absolutely. It's the drama we live for. But it does make you question if Moeam's grand gesture is going to backfire spectacularly, or if Dan Ho is going to be surprisingly into it. The suspense is killing me. Right. Two episodes left, people. How are they going to wrap this all up? Your guess is as good as mine, but I have a feeling it's going to be a wild ride. Oh, I have no doubt about that. But hey, that's the beauty of a good K-drama, right? Absolutely. The twists, the turns, the tears, it's all part of the experience. And whether Love Next Door sticks the landing or completely crashes and burns, it's definitely given us a lot to talk about. That's for sure. So to all our listeners out there, what are your predictions? Can this show redeem itself in these final two episodes? Will love conquer all? Hit us up with your theories, your hopes, your wildest dreams. We want to hear it all. And until next time, happy watching, everyone. Happy watching. Thank you.